This conference will now be recorded. Hello guys, welcome to Kumar Gansalki. So guys, in this session, I'm going to start account table. So account table, basic settings, okay? Now, see guys, if you talk about any organizations, uh, then every organization will have certain customers and certain vendors. Now, it means, uh, say for example of Tata Motor. Tata Motor is manufacturing uh, certain and uh, you know products and all in order to sell into market. Now, in order to produce whatever the end product is there, of course, they require certain raw materials and all, which is going to be procured somewhere from somewhere in the sense from vendors. So, whatever this vendor-related transactions are taking place. Right, whatever these vendor related transactions are taking place. Let's suppose vendors are going to send you uh, the goods along with the invoices. So those invoices we have to post in SAP. Now, uh, and after, let's suppose once we have posted the invoices, then the payment is going to be made after a certain time, after a certain days or period, as per the negotiation with the vendors. That is for as per uh, the terms of payment, which is neg negotiated with the vendors. So what will happen, guys? These all, whatever the invoices we have posted in SAP, those are our liability because we are liable to pay, uh, you know, that particular or those certain amounts after certain period of time. Now, so here, uh, say for example. If you talk about a very simple example here, let me open the Excel sheet. Now, say for example, since we are having rent GL itself, okay, killer. So uh, let's suppose whatever this Tata Motor uh, premises is there, let's suppose there are corporate offices there that is they have taken on rent itself. So every month what is happening? A particular builder is going to send the invoices. Okay, so in that case, what will be the accounting entry, guys? The accounting entry will be let's suppose front account is going to be debited with certain amount, and your vendor account is going to be credited with certain amount. Now, rent is what, guys? Rent is a ZL account, it is a ZL account, means GL master. And vendor. Vendor means there will be certain name, right? Let's suppose X Y Z Entra. Certain. Let's suppose builder is there. So this is a vendor. So this vendor also need to be set up. Okay. This vendor also need to be set up. Uh, the way we have set up the GL masters. Okay. Master data means what case? If you set up this master data once, and uh, that is going to be used for lifelong, until unless it is going to be blocked or set for deletions and all, right? So likewise, even vendor master also we need to set up. This is your vendor. This X Y Z infra is your vendor. So now what will happen? Say for example, if you have to post a pretty simple uh, what to set transaction also in that case. Let's suppose this rent account debit and your vendor account is going to be credited. So in that case, we need to set up a ZL account which is already set up or else let's suppose if you have to set up a new ZL also, that can be set up by because whichever the configurations are required to set up a ZL account, those configurations we have already done, right? But it, so now ZL related configurations we have done, now you can set up one ZL 10 GL, 100 GL, 1000 GL, it's, it's okay. Now we have to set up all GL account. Configurations are not required by because configuration is already done. But if you talk about vendor or vendor master, so if we have to set up a vendor master here in SAP, then before that we must have to do certain configurations. Okay, so those configurations are called account payable configurations, or we can say account payable basic settings, because in account payable, there are a lot more things which will come into picture and those things we are going to discuss one by one. So now we'll discuss, <clears throat> we'll talk about account payable basic settings right now so that uh, 
after the, those basic settings what will happen we'll be able to set up the vendor master and then after we'll be able to post certain invoices okay <clears throat> and then after there are <clears throat> several other topics also will come into picture one by one so what are the settings guys so look at here there are certain settings configuration steps what we have to configure define vendor account groups i'll tell you guys now if you talk about vendor account group okay then if you guys are able to remember earlier we have we have set up gl account group right we have set up gl account group okay what is the use of gl account group guys can anybody explain what is the use of this account group gl account group what does it control anyone gl account group controls the fields which appears crash stop while crash stop the gl accounts anybody else I want to see it hi sir yeah tell me sign sir gl account is used to record the business transaction no 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 i'm talking about gl account group gl account group. and Hello. it is used to secure the same nature of gl account into a one one group okay hello yeah tell me. hello yeah sir so uh, like we control uh, we control like uh, through this uh, we, while we creating the gl account the field will be um, like uh, reacting according to the account group field status status okay what does it mean what you want to say uh, sir agar matlab uh, account group ke andar agar hum field status ko matlab account group ke andar field status ko agar hum uh, jaise maintain karenge wo waisi react karengi jab hum fs00 ki uh, gl create karenge you mean to say that it controls the fields of gl master right directly this is uh, fields of gl fields of GL, gl creation any anything is apart from this? and also it controls the uh, number ranges of the gl accounts yes exactly i think oh, it will be done as a account group i think uh sai you want to say something sir it, the number ranges and the field status all these things will be controlled by the account group i think yeah but if you say i think then this is not going to be considered right Basically, account okay. group will be done by the all these things, sir. Field status things are controlled by the account group, and the number range is also controlled by the account group. But uh, you are saying that GL account group has a GL account group is used to the nature of GL account group. I will tell you. I will tell you. GL account group means you have to explain about GL master, right? Yes, yes sir. sir. GL master. GL master. Yeah. Now, anybody want to say anything? Ravi, you wanted to say something? Yes, sir. Sir, I think uh, account group segregate that single kind of account. Okay. So I'll tell you guys. It's the answer is pretty simple. You have to say in first line that it 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 is a group of similar nature of GL account. That is the first thing. Second thing, it controls the fields which appears during creation of GL master. and third thing is it, it controls the number range it's pretty simple right just everybody be on mute so yes, sir. this is this is what i wanted to uh, hear from you guys okay now i just be on mute okay sir okay so now and uh, there is a answer from kasuri also it contains the same type of account but uh, the shortcut you know is not acceptable why it is if you say the same answers like you everybody is are going to repeat everybody is are going to answer like that itself right so why somebody is going to consider your profile isn't it 
If you say like it contains the same type of account, accounts, everybody, I'll tell you, I have asked such kind of questions from several people in telephone account or Facebook account. Most likely, people will say that yeah, it, it, it's a group of similar kind of you know GL account or similar kind of accounts and all, right? But you have to add all those things in the sense fields. It controls the fields. It controls the number range. Now, now, so why I asked about GL account group because now here in account payable what we have to do in account payable we have to define vendor account group right so what about this vendor account group also vendor account group also is having the same functionality okay vendor account group is also having the same functionality this is also going to control the fields which appears during creation of vendor master at the same time this controls the number range also Right. Likewise, what is happening, guys? Likewise, once I start the account receivable, there also what will happen, guys? One second account receivable basic setting will come into picture. And the same thing, whatever these settings are there, these all settings are going to be done for account receivables only. Also, these transaction code will be different. Okay. So even in account receivable, also you have to define the customer account group. So say for example, what we are having GL account group, we are having vendor account group, we are having customer account group. So what I said, I asked, what do you mean by GL account group? If somebody is going to ask like, what do you mean by GL account group? You have to say GL account group controls the fields which appears during creation of GL master. And it also controls the number of number range. It also controls the number range of particular this GL master and all. If somebody asks what they mean by vendor account group, then you have to say vendor account group controls the fields of vendor master along with the number ranges. Likewise, what we mean by customer account group, then that controls the fields of customer master along with the number ranges. But if somebody is going to ask what do you mean by account group, it means a common question is going to be asked. So never say GL, customer or vendor. You have to say account group controls the fields which appears during creation of master data. Why? Because the common common question is there. Account group means it could be for GL, it could be for vendor, it could be for customer entity. So we are also going to give diplomatic answer itself. We are saying that it controls the fields of master data. Master data means it could be GL master, it could be customer master, it could be vendor master. This is how people are going to ask. This is just a basic question itself, but we can say it's a tricky question, right? So you have to now now here. So what we are going to do guys, we are going to define account group OBD3. It's pretty simple. Nothing is there in that. Let me log in. Okay. So now OB D3. Click on new entry and here give this team 20 the same code so that it will be easy for you guys to remember. Now, now just save it. Control S. Okay. Now double click on general letter. Double click on any one like the support address. Look at here, there are lots of fields, right? These fields. Okay, so if you if you are going to apply, like let's suppose if you suppress any field, if you make any field as a required entry, if you make it optional, if you make it display, where is the impact going to happen, guys? The impact will happen on the vendor master. Okay, here we are going to suppress, then what will happen? This field is going to be suppressed in vendor master this is how it's getting control the same way the way it is getting controlled by gl account group in the same way customer account group vendor account group. these are the very basic things okay now so what we have done we have defined we have defined the customer account group what next we have to define a number range what is the transaction code guys xkn1 by that we are going to define the number range your slash n x k n1 and click on change interval 
Okay, look at here guys. There are lots of number range has been defined by people Okay, lots of number range has been defined by people. So here what will happen now? You have to you have to select you have to define I and Unused number range unused in the sense like I suppose here. This is one lakh to one lakh ninety nine thousand something is there like two lakh to two lakh right so likewise there are several number range is defined already right look at here several number range has been defined now so if you have to define let's suppose i'm going to define uh, code look at the code one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen it's already so we have to give a unique code also let's suppose 18 90 21 to 23 is not used so we are going to create let's suppose 23 okay or you can give alphanumeric also you can give alphabetic also that's that's not so i'm going to give let's suppose 1000 to 129 and press enter okay look at here guys it has been accepted by system okay it has been accepted but but let's suppose which one I have created? I have created 23, right? There it is. Let me come down. It's here, right? It's here, whichever. But now let's suppose sometime what will happen? Sometime every time you guys are not that much lucky. Let's suppose I'm going to do like this. Center. So in that case, what is happening? Look at here. System is saying that enter interval without overlap. Okay, enter an interval without overlap. Right. It means what is happening? Whichever range I have given, it is going to be overlap with some, you know, some of the number range. Where now again you have to find out where it is overlapping. Why? Because somebody has given let's suppose one like two this one. Right. Now if you are going to give any number range. I'll tell you guys what is this overlapping. It's quite easy. Let's suppose I have given 1000 to 2000. Okay. Say for example. Okay. So we are going to use a number range 1000 to 2000. Now 2000 to 3000. The moment you are going to create 2000 to 3000, the system will not allow. Why? Because this is overlapping. This is overlapping with which one? Number range. This, let's suppose this is. Let's suppose we have given a, b. So this is overlapping with this one, 1000 to 2000. Why? Because the what is the last number of this one? This this range. It is 1000 to 2000. 2000 is the last number, right? And so here it is going to be in here at 2000. And again, how can you start from 2000 itself, right? 2000 is the part of which one? 2000 is the part of part of this A or B. So system will be confused, right? So that's what. If you want to create, then you can create 2001 like this, right? Then system is going to accept. So now what will happen in most of the cases, whenever you are going to set up a number range, then what will happen? System is going to system is going to system is going to throw an error error in the sense like which error this error enter interval without overlap so what will happen you have to create unused you have to give unused number range in the sense the number range which is not given by other people right so you can do like this we are having like suppose 1000 1000 to one triple line this one is taken this one is considered this is considered right so what i have done i simply i have just for testing purpose i have taken it, it you know i have given and system has taken this right but so i'll save it okay now my number range is 23 but whenever you guys let's suppose you are going to give a number range which is not acceptable then i'll tell you guys it's pretty simple 
I have shown you guys how to set up the number range, right? You you came to know how to set up the number range. After that, you use this default number range, zero two. Better to use default number range, zero two. Okay. So now what we have done, we have defined a number range. Create a number range. Have defined a number range, right? Assign number range to vendor account group. So how account group is going to control the number range? Also, guys, look at here. Whichever number range we have set up, whether it is zero two or twenty three or zero or whatever, whatever it is, right? So whatever, whatever. Uh, there is a question. Can we take at a one thousand to a one triple nine? Yes, you can take it. Why not to make experiment, right? So now, so assign number range. Uh, to the vendor account group, right? So assign the number range to vendor account group. Whatever account group we have created, assign this number range against that account group. Now use transaction code slash n o v a s. Okay. Now I'm going to give TM20. This is our account group and here you have to use the number range which one i have created guys i created 23 right so if you are unable to create the number range if you are unable to find out unused range then what will happen i told you that you can use zero two better to use zero two which is the default number range given by sap okay you can use zero two i have left 23 for you guys anybody can use that okay i'm going to use let's suppose zero two itself okay now save it so what is happening guys let's suppose here i have zero two or or 23 or let's suppose even a b c d also we can give alpha uh, beta also we can give now if you're going to assign let's suppose a here if you assign a instead of zero two if you assign a then what will happen whenever the vendor master is going to be created then the number range is going to be derived from system by system from 1000 to it will be 1000 to 2000 from this range if you assign b then what will happen the range will be 2001 to 3000 it means from this range system is going to generate the number range or else you give 1000 to 1 triple line and here 2000 to 2 triple line okay so here what will happen if you are going to create if you are going to assign a then one series number range will be there if you're going to assign b then two series number range will be there okay so what we have done we have created the number range we have assigned the number range to the account group now define tolerance group for vendors guys here even the tolerance group is going to be set up for vendor also okay for vendor and customer both for vendor and customer both here also i'll just do one thing <laughs> what is the transaction code OBA3? I guess OBA3. Yes, so use transaction code OBA3. Okay, here click on inventory. And uh, you can give just give your company code. TM20. Don't give any group here. Simply give your company code descriptions. Okay. And here in great uh, what is the loss and yes, again we are going to give certain amount. Let's suppose five per five. Okay. Uh, leave the percentage field. Okay. Let me save it. What is the like? There is a grace period there also, but this grace period we are going to use somewhere. In the further upcoming what to see this one now i'll tell you guys generally what is happening i'll just do one thing okay so see for example we are having whenever you uh, post an invoices the invoice let's suppose whenever you post the invoices so what will happen the invoice amount is thousand point zero two let's suppose so what will happen the vendor is going to make, sorry uh, in the sense vendor has sent you the invoices of this one right now what will happen 
whenever the payment is going to be made, let's suppose your company, your organization is going to make payment in round figure. That is 1000. So now look at here guys, in invoice and this payment, payment amount, there are certain differences. So system will not allow you to clear this. Okay, whenever you are going to make payment, then invoice will be whatever invoice is there that is going to be that that invoice amount will be shown in the system as an open item. What is this open item, guys? Once I post the invoice, you guys will come to note on it. So whenever we are going to post the respective payment, then what will happen? This this invoice amount is going to be cleared. Okay. From open item it is going to be treated as a cleared item so what will happen guys there is a difference of certain amount okay so why we have given certain tolerance limits in the sense like five rupees ten rupees hundred rupees fifty rupees that depends upon your client whatever they are saying the amount we can keep over there okay or else initially during implementations guys we are not going to discuss with the client simply we give uh, any uh, you know uh, in the sense any amount we are going to give some small amount 10 or 20 or 50 we are going to give because during implementations if you started discussing each and everything with the client then from, from you know for everything they will uh, they would like to know the logic what is the logic behind this why you know what will happen if I give this amount or that amount so it is going to take lots of time it's a very simple things without asking we are going to give certain what to say amounts small amount so now so this difference is if you have given this tolerance limit and all then what will happen system will consider these differences okay and the differences are going to be posted in a different account which need to be assigned somewhere okay so now this is also a mandatory setting okay you must have to define the tolerance group for customer vendor both who be a dream is the same is going to be applicable in case of customer also now creation of reconciliation account what is the use of reconciliation account guys this one from this basic setting account payable basic setting if any question is going to be asked by people then they will ask questions about this account group what do you mean by account group what does it control and apart from this what do you mean by reconciliation account what is the use of reconciliation account okay so what about can anybody explain what is the use of reconciliation account guys Reconciliation. Yeah, tell me. A reconciliation account is used to have a intermediary account, which will be has a vendor account would be a subsidiary account. Whatever the values you are posting, it will be reflected into the GL account through the reconciliation account. I think. Has for yes, has for reconciliation account is used to transfer the whatever the amount we are posting in the vendor account that will be directly hitting into the GL account through the reconciliation account. Okay. Okay. Anybody want to give any other uh, explanation? Hello, sir. Yeah. Hello, sir. Hello, sir. Hello, sir. Hello, sir. Uh, sir, reconciliation account is a sort of a consolidation of all the customers' account, customers and vendors' account. Repeat again. It's a. It's a uh, it, it can be called as a consolidation or a summary of all the accounts which we have, all the customer accounts or uh, vendor accounts in case of accounts receivable. Okay. 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 Anybody? What is this reconciliation? Hello. Yeah, yeah, uh, whatever uh, whatever we data posted in uh, like vendor account it will automatically go to the reconciliation account it is just like to make the reconciliation between the gl and the vendor that's it reconciliation between gl and what do you mean to say reconciliation between vendor and gl whatever the data posted in vendor account let's say you have posted in a thousand rupees of invoice in vendor it will reflect it in somewhere in reconciliation account so what is True. the benefit? Ah. I'll, I'll ask one question. You are a consultant, right? Now here the yes. logic. I know why. Why we have set up this reconciliation? Let's suppose if SAP is not going to give you reconciliation account field over there, then what will happen? It will be like uh, complicated for the user. While they are doing the reporting, they will find it very difficult to do the reconciliation because like Ram Sham. 
how it will be represented in the balance sheet it will like make some uh, bad impact on the balance sheet also bad impact on the balance sheet in the sense like uh, let's say uh, if we post directly uh, like uh, post in like on vendor only then it will show in the balance sheet like ram sham this kind of account so lot of uh, like uh, the balance sheet will be so long so that's why the yeah. first the entry is posted uh, ram then it, it will be go to the reconciliation account that is gl so it will okay. be yeah so yes whatever you are saying i will understand the logic is clear now i'll tell you guys other people let's suppose we are having several vendors okay we are having several vendors in a different way in a simplest way i'll try to make you guys understand okay we are having several vendors now so we have posted lots of different different invoices right against okay so these all are the amount which we have posted okay now if you need like let's suppose if you have to count the total payable okay whatever invoices we have posted these invoices are our payable amount right so if you have to count total payable how we are going to count total payable guys total payable is possible only if you are going to sum you have to count the sum of this all how much let's suppose 20100 how i have counted this 20100 simply because these all are there in excel sheet simply i have calculated easily right but this is there only if we are having few vendors might be 5 6 7 right but what will happen if you are having 6000 vendors if you are having 10000 vendors in that case if you need to count the total payable because total payable is required guys why once you are going to prepare the balance sheet okay once you prepare the financial statement then we have to show because you have to show the suppose assets and liabilities okay so whatever payables are there that is our liabilities so payables means like let's suppose whichever invoices we have posted against so we are having let's suppose 5000 vendors 6000 vendors against every vendor sort of invoices we have posted so these all are your payable now one by one it is not possible to show all the vendors you know one by one in the balance sheet because it's going to be huge might be 6000 there might be a, there may be an organization where they are having like uh, let's suppose 50000 vendors 40000 vendors right so what will happen guys we have to show only payable upon amount in the balance sheet so what is happening then okay then we are going to set up a reconciliation gl let's suppose the reconciliation account is this reconciliation account is nothing but a gl account that is the first thing okay so we are going to set up a reconciliation gl what is this reconciliation gl guys the same gl let's suppose we have set up one, one gl account okay this gl account is going to be assigned against every vendor master whenever any vendor master is going to be set up against those vendor master what is happening we are going to set up we are going to assign this reconciliation account against the vendor master so what will happen whenever you are going to post a transaction against this vendor then what will happen indirectly the transaction is going to be updated in this gl account also in the sense in this reconciliation account also again this 5000 also posted against this vendor but again this transaction is going to be updated against this gl also so instead of instead of consolidating one by one all the vendor balances simply we are going to check this gl balance in the sense this reconciliation gl balance and you will be finding that the total amount is let's suppose 20100 right so this amount is going to be published in the balance sheet right there is a topic called financial statement version guys once i cover that topic then you will be having a perfect understanding of this logic okay because in financial statement what is happening guys it's not like that we are going to update the gl balances manually we need to set up a financial statement version and in that we are going to assign the gl accounts so what will happen system automatically system is going to fetch this gl balances okay gl balances so here what will happen guys 
in this GR account, what is happening? Total balance is 20,100. So automatically system is going to fetch this balance and the system will come to know that total payable is 20,100. Okay, so you can see an account what it is going to do guys. It is going to consolidate the total payable as of now we are in account payable, right? So I'm talking about payable itself. Okay, once we cover the account payable and receivable both Then you can say that it is going to consolidate the total payable or total receivables. This is the use Reconciliation is what? It's a ZL account Okay, this is how this is the use of this reconciliation account This is why we are going to set up and this is why we are going to assign against the vendor master so this is reconciliation deal also need to be set up and it's pretty simple i think it's gone so i'll have to log in again Okay, so here your transaction code FS00 and here change the company code first. Company code is DM20 and you can see an account guys. So this is for account payable we are going to create, right? And this account payable is going to be it is your liability, right? So that is going to be set up under liability account group. So now click on create. And what is the number range of liability guys? I'm able to remember it is 2000 to 2009. So I'm going to use the first number 2000. Okay, now here I need to change the company code also. TM20 and then press enter. Okay, so here select the liability amount group. It's so part of balance sheet. And here let's suppose I'm going to create. Table. Then here, what you have to do is look at your reconciliation account for account types. Here you need to select. Okay, so you need to select what vendor. Okay, you need to select vendor, and then click on line item display. And don't apply a check mark here on open item because by default reconciliation account will be treated as open item itself. Okay, now give a short key and then here we are going to give a field status group for reconciliation account, guys. Keep in your mind Z067 always. Z067 is the field status group which is set up. Press enter. Okay, look at here. This is for reconciliation account G067 and save it. Okay, so now what we have done, we have we have created a reconciliation account. Now what next guys? The next step is we need to set up the vendor master. Okay, how to set up a vendor master? It's pretty simple. Use transaction code XK01. XK01 press enter and then here you need to give your company code you need to give the account group whichever we have created I'm going to give TM20 itself and purchase organization what is the use of purchase organization guys these things will come into picture once we start a topic called FIMM integration okay once I cover the P2P scenario then you will be having the logic of you will come to know the logic behind purchase organizations in real time what is happening guys this purchase organizations will be set up by material management consultant since we are not having any material management consultant here and we have to perform testing for p2p in the sense FIMM integrations so we will set up this purchase organizations but later not now okay but integration topic will come still lots of time is there now so you have to give your company code you have to give your account group and then don't give the vendor number because system is going to generate the vendor number automatically you need to press enter now here let's suppose 
we are going to create you can give any name let's suppose xyz infra this is we have created for what okay now i'm going to give only i'm going to fill up the mandatory fields okay i'm going to fill up the mandatory fields only certain details i'm going to leave up this details knowingly guys why because there is a topic called automatic payment program so i have to show you guys certain you know issues certain errors which is taking place uh, later on once i start that topic okay so i don't give anything here in address field simply country i have given why because this is a mandatory field right here this is a mandatory field so you must have to give country code and then press enter okay now here in control tab uh, again this control tab will come into picture guys later once i start a topic called if customer is your vendor or vendor is your customer and vice versa so not going to give any details press enter here what we are going to give guys here we are going to give the bank details okay bank accounts of the vendors so i'm not going to give any bank account right now this will come into picture later later we have to give this bank account a lot simply we are going to create a basic you know a simple vendor here now here what is happening contact person details contact person means for every vendor there will be let's suppose if you have any dispute with a the vendor then whom we are going to call this vendor is nothing but an organization right this vendor is nothing but an organization so now okay so now what will happen guys so whom you are going to contact so there will be some contact person whenever you are going to do the agreement with the vendor whenever your purchasing team is going to involve with the agreement with the vendor then they will be taking this purchase uh, what to say this contact person details and all at the time of setting up vendor master people can enter those details okay details in the sense that person name telephone number fax number whatever is there if you double click on this field then here you'll be having all the details okay name uh, you know like even if you come at the bottom then, then you'll be having contact number other details also can be entered here right phone number fax number mobile number whatever it is now and then press enter and here what is happening guys here we are going to here we are going to enter the reconciliation account that is 2000 we have created okay we have created this reconciliation account 2000 now press enter and here we are having payment terms what is this payment terms guys like? separate session will be there right now i'm going to use standard payment terms that is is to zero one okay apart from this payment methods and all this is this these all things will come into picture later okay because in account payable we are having lots of other settings so one by one once we proceed further then i'm going to explain the logic of other fields also now press enter nothing else we are going to give guys your dunning procedure and all dunning will come into picture later once i start the account receivable there i'm going to cover this now press enter the system is going to ask you that you want to save yes i want to save so click on yes now system is going to generate a number look at here at bottom a vendor number got generated that is one triple one double zero four three one one double zero four three one this is our vendor number display then what is happening whatever details we have given those details can be viewed easily okay now what we have done guys we have created a vendor master okay this is our vendor now we'll do one thing create one more system and here use transaction code fb sexy and here okay so first of all i have to check my company code just come down it is dm01 so i'll have to change here click on company code i'm going to give dm20 
okay for you guys whenever you are going to use fb64 time system will give a pop up box a small box will appear here you have to give the company code over there itself now what is our vendor account guys so it is 100431 this number we are going to give 100431 and then give your invoice date same date invoice date and posting date same date okay this the difference between both you'll be able to understand in uh, what is it once i uh, cover a topic called terms of payment i'm going to give an amount here let's suppose thousand rupees itself and then deal account so deal account we are having rent account give this rent account four thousand and here again amount we are going to give one thousand itself okay now press enter okay so look at here now here it's showing green it means everything is fine perfect you need to click on simulate to see the accounting entry okay so look at here guys now your vendor is getting your vendor is getting credited and this real account rent here is going to be debited uh if you are able to understand from this posting key it's okay or if not then look at here minus symbol this is credit and plus symbol means debit right so this is debited and this is credited now just post it now how to get the uh, you know this vendor balance use transaction code f b l one and press enter okay and just execute look at here guys now what is happening we are having this 1000 we have posted 1000 words of invoice now what is happening it is open item it is going to be treated as an open item it will be open item until unless we are going to make the payment once you make the payment then what will happen guys then, then it is going to be so how to make payment it's pretty simple if you make payment it's pretty simple use transaction code f-53 and here use the bank yield bank sale is that is hdfc bank we have created right and amount is also which amount guys 1000 and here give you a vendor number what is the open item selection means what here we are going to give the vendor number 100 what is the vendor number guys 100 431 right so 100 431 and then you need to press enter once you press enter look at here this amount 1000 right so how much we have entered we have entered 1000 and how much system has signed system is also assigned 1000 itself so what is the difference guys zero no differences right now if you want to see the accounting entry click on document and click on simulate okay so this is the accounting entry here what is happening guys your vendor is going to be debited here and your bank account is going to be credited okay now if you post this Click on post. So if you post this one, then what is happening, guys? Now just come here. Now what is happening? This one is showing as an open item. Open item means the only open item is red color symbol means what guys? Only invoice is posted, right? Payment we have not posted yet. Now what we have done, guys, we have posted the payment also. So if you post the payment, then this open item will not be available here if you click on list and click on refresh now open item gone in the sense look at here no item selected press enter it means that open item gone so you need to click on cleared item or better to click on all item and then execute all item means open and close all item is going to be visible right now we are not having any open item in the sense no invoices why because we had only one invoice and against against that payment also has been Made. okay so 
how you will come to know which one is the invoice and which one is the payment so look at your document type the document type here is for invoices and kz is for payment so by document type with the help of document type we will come to know which one is the invoice and which, which one is the payment so this is just about account payable basic setting guys in account payable we are having a lot more topics which is going to discuss which will be discussed one by one in our conversation okay so that's all in this session guys and that's all for today